Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I'm a fourth generation witch. Today's video is part of my ever popular almanac series, which is witchcraft for the month of August. August is a beautiful month. The grain is mostly harvested, vegetables are plenty. It is a month of joy. So what I would like to do in today's video is to give you a general overview of the month of August and the witchcraft that you can carry out throughout the month and where these trends lead you. Then we'll get into the nitty gritty detail for the days of August and what works best and when and why. So with that introduction over, let's start with the general overview for August. August is of course all about the grain harvest. This is when the barley, the wheat, the corn, all is coming to fruition and is harvested aplenty. Of course, us witches know the power of the grain harvest. This is what we call Lunasa or Lammas, which is on the 1st of August. Although Lammas or Lunasa has been crystallised onto the 1st of August. This festival actually run any time from mid-July to mid-August and it takes about 10 days to harvest the grain. However, I have done a video all about Lunasa and Lammas and how to celebrate it, its traditions and pagan rites and I'll put that up here for you should you want to have a look at it. But I did want to just talk in general about ley lines and Lunasa. So there is the St Michael's Ley Line, which runs from the Norfolk coast all the way down to St Michael's Mount in southern Cornwall, across the straight line, the British Isles. The reason why it's called the St Michael's Ley Line is because it passes through lots of Christian sites which are dedicated to St Michael. These churches dedicated to St Michael, which is why it's called the St Michael's Ley Line, because it passes through them, were built upon pagan sacred sites. And St Michael is basically the Christianised sun god because this is a sun ley line. And around the 1st of August, it is activated and you can watch the sun rising up on the Norfolk coast and then streaking across the land, which does take it a couple of minutes or so, um, to the Cornish St Michael's Mount where the sun rises upon that and this sparks activity in the ley line. And this ley line is the dragon line of old. It was not St Michael's ley line, but the dragon. Celtic goddess Grania was very much celebrated at this time and she is often represented as a corn dolly where the last sheath of corn in a field was taken and made into a corn dolly to be carried into the home to keep her spirit safe throughout the winter. Actually these ones here are actually last year's corn dollies. I must replace them because I didn't plough them back into the land. Oops, but I don't necessarily think the spirit of the corn is in these now. I think he's already left and is out in the land. Lammas has a couple of traditions associated with it. One of my favourites was the try before you buy tradition, where if you wanted to say get married, but you weren't completely sure about your partner, you could try him or her for 14 days during the Lammas festival, which is about 10 to 14 days. And if you still liked each other at the end of this festival, you could then go ahead and get married. Now, quite often babies were born from this union of the couple who then did not stay together. However, these babies were seen as blessed by the corn spirit and were especially loved and considered lucky. The Cornish, of course, because they're still quite pagan down that part of the world, they have a wonderful festival called the Morva. And this is a festival that celebrates the some powerful land deities who were giants. And these giants fought each other and the giant who was the conqueror took the other giant's daughter as his wife. And this was the union that brought the land back together. The Cornish Morva is quite a nice tradition. They celebrate it by um, enacting the battle between the two giants, you know, with one conquering the other. August is also the time when the fruits and vegetables in your garden are at their height. 
But one that is oft overlooked, but not by us witches, is the herb yarrow. Yarrow is the witch's herb and it has so many traditions associated with it. It comes into its own at the end of July and August and is in its full flower. And this is when we should harvest it. Now yarrow is used for a lot. So I'm just gonna go through a couple of the main uses that you would consider for yarrow. As a witch, yarrow is a psychic herb. A tea made from yarrow leaves and flowers will help you develop your psychic abilities. It has an innate interest in opening the psychic self and holding the yarrow flower up to your eyes and pressing it onto them helps you develop your second sight. Yarrow will show you if your lover is actually true. Wear it on your chest and go and see your loved one. Spend as much time with them as possible. And when you come back, take the nosegay from your chest and place it in a drawer. In the morning, if it is still fresh and true, then so is your lover. Yarrow was also used as part of fertility spells and scientifically, Yarrow does have a lot of the ingredients that help push blood to your womb. And so therefore, yarrow is a great one for use in fertility spells. Recommended that. Before hops were discovered as a beer ingredient, it was used to make gruit with rosemary and bog myrtle as well. And gruit was an early form of ale. If you make a paste of yarrow and apply it to bald patches on your head, it will stop the baldness increasing. It doesn't bring back hair, but it does stop it developing further. It is also a very traditional cure for insomnia. Put some dried yarrow in a cloth bag and have it on your pillow so that you inhale the fumes and you'll find you sleep true and dream beautifully. I love yarrow actually. Apart from daisy and dandelion, I think the yarrow, the witch's herb, was the first wildflower I ever taught the kids. So with the harvest gathered in and all the grain safely stored, it is the time to use the fields for games. This is shown in repercussions with all the fates and the fairs that happen today in the English countryside. And in fact, our local village has got a couple of fates and fairs happening, which I can't wait for. The flower one being my particular favourite, although I'm quite keen on the dog show. There you've got a dog fancy dress and I think my son and the terrier, which is our little dog, are going to dress up as George and the dragon. It's going to be hilarious. Hope we win, fingers crossed. We never win at the dog show. Our dogs don't catch the selector's eye and our costumes are never good enough. So in the English countryside, there is a lot of fates happening and a lot of them are repercussions of old pagan practices. For example, in Derbyshire, they go all in for well dressing. And this is where they have beautiful banners made of flowers, which they decorate their wells with. Wells were considered sacred sites by our pagan ancestors. And to dress a well is to basically give an offering to a well or to the spirit that lives within it. And this is still happening today throughout Derbyshire, but it's obviously become rather a competition because look what they do. Another great addition, which is an echo of previous pagan happenings, is the Burry Man Festival in Scotland. This is where a man is dressed up and covered in the burrs from the burdock plant and then paraded through the area having a drink at varying people's houses and scaring the local children. It must be some kind of representation of some land spirit, but who knows where it comes from. So that was my overview of August. Now we've done the overview, let's go into the nitty gritty. And of course, we're going to start with the first of August, which is the Wiccan holiday of Lunasa. The Wiccan Sabbath of Lunasa is the start of the autumn season because this is the time when 
The earth has stopped growing. We're now setting seed. Lammas, therefore, is one of the quarter day sabbats, indicating a new season has started. And new seasons are always about fire. So best thing for you to do is have a bonfire. Although I cannot recommend that now because it's too hot and you might burn down the wood like we did a couple of years ago. So a candle inside, carefully kept, would be just as good. The 12th of August is the night of the full moon. The full moon this month is known obviously as the grain moon, possibly the lynx moon or the corn moon. And it is the moon of the harvest. This moon happens in Aquarius. And so for all you Aquarians out there, this is your moon for the summer. Aquarius is all about friendship. And so this is a great moon to draw down new friends. So I would suggest make some moon water and then use that moon water in a cocktail at a party and that get you some new mates. How much fun could that be? The 12th and the 13th are also my favourite meteor shower day of the year, which is the Perseids. It is a great pity that you will not be able to see them particularly well because the brightness of the moon will overwhelm. What do you do when you see a shooting star? Well, of course, you make a wish. And wish magic should always be for yourself, not for other people. Make sure you wish for your own wants and your own needs. The 27th to the 29th of August is the Notting Hill Carnival. Now the Notting Hill Carnival will always have those people on stilts. These are known as Moco Jumbies and they are pretty Wiccan if you ask me. Moko was a West African god of retribution and a Moko Jumbi means a, a god spirit. Jumbi just means spirits. It has become and has taken over the years to mean a protective spirit and so the Moko Jumbies, these tall men on stilts, channel the Moko Jumbi spirit to protect and look down and cast their protective circles around those beneath them. And it is, this is a rather beautiful tradition taken straight from the slaves of Africa who were shipped out to the Caribbean. And this is where it comes from. The Moko Jumbies themselves were thought to reside in the silk cotton trees, the huge ones that were found on the plantations, because that is where the slaves tended to be hanged from. And it is where they could help protect their spirit and make sure they passed over into the land of the spirits. And so, should you be at the Notting Hill Carnival, make sure that you travel in the area of a Moko Jumbi. My final date for August is the 27th, where it is the new moon. The new moon is in Virgo. New moons are always about new beginnings and new plans for the month ahead. Virgo is very much about organisation and health. Very keen on, you know, making sure everything is right and proper. And so this is a great time to start a new health regime, a new diet, a new organisation of your cupboards. In fact, that is exactly what I am going to do because my house is a pit. I need to go through every single cupboard, clear it out, give all the stuff we don't need to the local hospice and make sure that everything else is in tip top condition. So I'm going to do that on the 27th of August. That also gives me enough time to think about it in my head and make sure I can plan it because, I, you know, I procrastinate quite a lot and put things off. I would love to know if you have any traditions for August. Do leave me a comment below. Otherwise, don't forget my coven meeting is coming up over on Patreon. Do go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherall. Come over, have a look and join in. Otherwise, please give me a like and subscribe because it really helps my channel if you do subscribe. I'll see you in a couple of days.